Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoky Gnocchi with Vodka Sauce. So if you're a fan of pillowy soft dumplings that live somewhere between mashed potatoes and pasta, then you're probably already eating gnocchi. But are you making it from scratch at home? Because it's so good made from scratch. But the good news is if you don't want to make gnocchi from scratch, you can still go buy some from the store. Skip ahead toward the end of this video and check out how we finish them in brown butter and then make that vodka tomato sauce. Gnocchi's going to have just a few main ingredients. First thing we're going to have is these Yukon Gold potatoes. And we're gonna get these coated in some oil and some smoked salt. And instead of boiling these today, as you typically would with gnocchi, we're gonna throw them on the smoker with a smoke tube and roast them until they're super tender and they've soaked up some of that smoke. Now, technically, you probably don't have to season these, but the potato skins will be a nice snack later, although they are gonna be discarded otherwise. We're gonna scoop the soft flesh out of the potato once it's fully cooked but the idea is to get a little extra smoke on them. Gonna give these just a little prick. I, the idea here is to let steam escape so a potato doesn't explode, which I don't know if I've ever actually seen, but I still poke them anyway. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 325 degrees, but we've got hickory pellets in the hopper and hickory pellets going in the smoke tube to fortify that smoke flavor. Just gonna steal some of these hickory pellets for the amazing tube smoker fire this thing up with a torch here in a sec. Make sure those pellets are well lit before you blow out the flame. We'll give it about 30 more seconds while we put the potatoes on. Now full disclosure, first thing this morning I threw a batch of potatoes on as soon as I got here so we're not standing around waiting. But these were on that same grill for an hour and a half. These have been off for about 15-20 minutes now. You can see how super tender they are, just hardly any resistance uh, when probed with a toothpick. So now we're just going to split these right down the middle and scoop out the insides. Get as much out of there as possible. And then if you like, you can save these potato skins. You know, fill them with a little bit of cheesy goodness or something and have them as snacks. Or, you know, they are potatoes. They're pretty cheap. You could just toss them. So next step is we're going to take our ricer, put that to the smallest setting so it's really going to break this down super fine. Now the other ingredients we need for the gnocchi, a cup and a half of flour, uh, we've got a couple tablespoons of melted butter here. We're going to knock out two egg yolks and then some more smoked salt. So sprinkle about a teaspoon of smoked salt over your potatoes. You're going to sprinkle some flour over as well. Flour is going to go in gradually. This, we may not use all one and a half cups or we may need just a little bit more. We'll just see how the consistency of the dough comes together. So immediately you see it's starting to turn just slightly doughy. Let's go ahead and mix in our melted butter. This, this is optional, but it adds a nice little bit of richness. A little more flour. And then let's pop our yolks in there. It starts to get gummy, adding more flour. At this point, it's pretty much one solid piece, so we can take it out of the bowl, put it on our work surface. I'm just going to knead that and keep adding some flour. Just about all that flour worked in there. Maybe a quarter cup left. It's starting to look really nice. All right, so it doesn't seem to want to take up a whole lot more flour, which means we're about done with the kneading process here. So once you're done, you're gonna just form it into a ball and then we're gonna divide it into four equal sized pieces. So then we're just going to take these pieces and roll them out, kind of like we're making a baguette. 
So that's about the diameter I would go for. I don't know what you call that, maybe three quarters of an inch, something like that. And now we're gonna cut these into the individual gnocchi. Cut them maybe a little more than an inch long. Size is totally up to you though. Just try to make them all about the same so they cook in the same amount of time. So just kind of rolling these little nuggets out now, these little dumplings, to give them a nice shape. But honestly, this is, you don't have to do this. Um, you don't have to put ridges in them. You probably normally see ridges in your gnocchi. They're there to catch the sauce, which is a great idea. But unless you've got a specialized gnocchi board, it's a little tricky to pull off with just a fork, dragging a fork across it. So for something like this, I'm just not gonna mess with it. We've got a pot of boiling water going. I'm gonna start dropping in our gnocchi. We're gonna work in batches here. It only takes two, three minutes usually, and you'll know they're done when they float to the surface. Typically when they pop to the top, I'll just give them about 30 more seconds if that. These are gonna get sauteed in brown butter later on, so they're also gonna be reheated. All right, there they are. We're gonna go right into an ice bath to make sure we don't overcook them. I'm gonna save just a little bit of this starchy pasta water in case we need it later for our sauce. Gnocchi just needed a few minutes to make sure we stopped that cooking process. Now they're drying out on towels and we are gonna transition to our sauce. Now moving on to our vodka sauce. Just a little bit of knife work to do. We're gonna mince up a quarter cup of shallots to start. These are just single bulb shallots, so you can treat them just like an onion. Cut them in that all around the world formation, aiming toward the center. And then just slicing them this way. Next up, we got a sweet red pepper. We're gonna break this down also one quarter cup. I like these little red peppers versus the red bells because they're, the flesh isn't quite as thick. So you can really mince these down into small pieces to kind of get them to melt into the sauce. Next, we want one tablespoon of garlic broken down nice and fine on the microplane. And then last little bit of knife work here, we need a couple tablespoons of minced basil. Roll it up tight so it doesn't all run away from me. Super aromatic. The tomatoes we're using are whole San Marzano tomatoes. They're sitting in a little bit of juice and sauce. I don't want all of it. We don't have to strain off all of it either. It's something that's gonna stay in there. Just so our sauce doesn't start out too thin. Back at the grill now, we've cranked up the heat to about 400. Got a cast iron skillet heating up in here and this is where we're gonna cook our sauce. So first things going in are the shallots, peppers, Cattleman's Grill Italiano seasoning. Got those shallots sweated down, softened up. Let's throw our garlic in now. I'm just gonna give that about one minute to warm through. Let's cook some of that raw out of it. Now adding the San Marzanos and the basil. You wanna crush all of these tomatoes. The easiest way to do that is with a hand masher. Check out how that sauce is thickened and condensed all that flavor. So at this point, we're ready to add our vodka. Now, I do not recommend adding the vodka directly over the flame. That's always a little bit dangerous, but we are going to burn off that vodka. So we're gonna cook this to make sure that we get most of the alcohol out. There will be a small amount, maybe like 1%, uh, but that actually helps to enhance the aromas, um, among other reasons why you add vodka to a sauce like this. Some say it's an emulsifier that actually binds together the tomato and the fat, uh, enhancing the flavors. Vodka's cooked off for a couple minutes, so now we're adding our cream. I love this bright orange color that the sauce becomes once the cream hits the tomato. At this point, you're just looking to reduce this down to your desired consistency. Sauce is looking good. 
If it thickens up a little bit too much, we've always got that pasta water left. But for now, we're gonna throw a lid on it to keep it warm. It's time to saute our gnocchi. Now it's time to put some color on our gnocchi. I'm gonna throw in a knob of butter, a couple tablespoons, into the steel skillet. Let that melt down and start to brown a little bit. Let that deep, nutty flavor from the brown butter. Got to where it's kind of foamy and you can see that browning going on. So now we're going to work in batches, adding our gnocchi, not all at once, because we want to make sure that we get plenty of surface area for browning. That's the kind of sear that we're looking for, that nice golden brown. So once you've got that on one side, let's just go ahead and move these around a little bit. Flip as many over as we can and then do the rest by hand. I did crank the temperature up at this point. We're cooking at 500, so it'll just continuously drop pellets. Just dancing around, getting coated in that brown butter. Those are looking nice, so we are going to take them out, go for round two. Looking pretty good on both sides here. Second batch is done. Let's go get them sauced. All right, sauce, man, it looks good. That's probably right about where we want it. So let's add the gnocchi. Get it fully coated. Smells absolutely incredible. All right, I'm gonna throw the lid on, practice a little patience and let it hang out for a few minutes before we plate it up. Let's get it plated up so we can get a bite. A little fresh shaved parm on top. So good. They're like pillowy soft, but with just a little browning texture on the outside. Vodka sauce is creamy, it's tangy, not too sweet, not too salty. Everything's kind of just balanced right. And this is such a fun dish, and I know that typically you'd do vodka sauce with like penne or something, but I thought today it'd be really fun to walk through this process of making gnocchi from scratch. Even if they're pretty rustic, mine don't look great. They sure do taste good though. Give it a try. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.